What do Savage Orcs, Buzz Lightyear, and Beasts of Chaos have in common? Questionable personal hygiene? They all just want to be loved. It's too late for that. Games Workshop has decided that it's time to perform Exterminatus on them all. So, to commemorate this diabolical decision, let's build it. Now, the diorama that I have in my head requires a lot of components. So I've been scouring Colts 3D, Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, as well as all of the Patreons that I've supported over the years. In short, 3D printer go And not just once, again, again, and again. Yeah, that one failed. So we're using water washable resin again. This stuff is brilliant. A quick rinse and we're good to cook. Look at all this junk. Let's hope future me knows what to do with it. Now, before we begin, I need to enter your mind. So hold still. Your consent is not required. I need to check we're on the same page. I need you. To imagine a soulless corporate overlord with no regard for your feelings, well-being, hopes, dreams, or monetary stability. This fellow. Is this the one? Looks like it to me. This is the gluttony model from Clay Cyanide Miniatures. Now, we can't expect this hero of the people to move around on foot during his rampage. Here we go. Look at this chariot of the gods. Ideal for a man on a mission. Ooh! Almost ideal. Needs a bit of work. Oof, but you as pleased as I am at how well that fits. Bingo! Let's scrape away these supports. Time to see how the gaming chair fits. It fits alright, we'll just have to raise it up a bit. We'll use this piece of foam from a previous project to make a booster seat. We'll push them together so we know where to cut. Nice. Let's neaten that up. Does it fit? Does it? Yeah, that fits. Everything always fits. Let's check the chair again. Looking like a big boy now. We need to build the rest of the ship up into a bit more of a command center. I've printed these bits and pieces that should do the job. We'll use this portal as the main frame. Let's add his desk and his dual monitor setup. As well as a little set of robo arms we could all do with those. I kind of want to have a big cartoony lever. You can see the model is designed to be holding a skull. But I think with a bit of green stuff we can commandeer that. Prepare the lever. Now we'll cover that severed head. Place the lever base. Just a little square of foam. Insert the stick, and there's our cartoony lever. Now we need to see an arms dealer because you can't do much exterminatus without weaponry. Yoink! This is the rear end of a much larger weapon. We've heard that before. But it should work. Let's hollow out the barrel. Resin has a tendency to crack, so we'll take our time using bigger and bigger drill bits. Now, because we're going to pin this later, we'll drill all the way through. In terms of what we'll be pinning it to, you get it? Got to be very careful here. Risky business. Back to the weapon, we've currently got a flamethrower with no fuel tank. Now I'm thinking one of these. Let me show you. Something like that. Needs tidying up first, of course. They do say with a blade, you should always cut away from you. So I lost my thumb, but we've got a flamethrower. For the pin, I've got a headless Allen key and we'll fix it in place with this UV resin. You squirt it on, you shine the torch. Easy peasy. Let's get the position right. 
we need enough to reach up through the top of the flamethrower as well. Torch time. Look at that. So this slab is what we'll use as a base. Oh god. How did you even get in here? N no thank you. Okay, anyway. Let's mark around the flame. So that we know whereabouts to position this raised area. Which we'll mark. And cut. Times two. Before securing them together. Now we need to shape it and prepare it to be covered with our ground mixture. Just need to secure it in place with some hot glue. Onto the mixture, step one, a quail! In its egg form, please. Then sand. Some polyfiller. Mod podge and then mix it up. Until it looks like something you would nibble and then not like. Paste it on. All over. Just so I know where to position things, we'll leave an imprint with the flames. couple of rocks in the desert zone. This is the base of a large tree, we'll fix that in place now to make sure it doesn't clash. You cannot have a desert without a cactus. Or deceased savage orcs for that matter. We need to fiddle about with the posing of these models as their default stance is ready for war, not recently incinerated. Rest in peace. So we've got one there, let's put another over here. Just a couple of boys chilling in the desert. Time to get the tree in place. This tree is from Cast and Play, their forest set. The best trees I've seen for printing so far. They print with these handy holes for slotting the branches into. Because it's top heavy, we'll use some UV resin to hold it in place securely. And on the other side, a crispy tree. Let's pad that in. A little bit more foliage in the desert. Before we secure the flames in place. Now we've got this chap, our Beasts of Chaos representative, in memory of all those lost. Unfortunately, we don't need his legs. What happened to the axe head? What, what? Also, we need to reposition his arms and head. Before we plunge his ass into the fire. We've also got Buffalo Bill. He thinks he's going to escape. No one ever escapes. Onto this area here, we need to build a small rickety platform and then dig one or two tunnel entrances for no particular reason. We're using balsa wood, very easy to work with. Look at him waving that blade around, he never learns. The mix isn't completely dry yet, so it's no trouble. Fit the two supports, and then the platform on top. If you're looking to do something like this at home, remember, a craftsman is only as good as his two... Hmm. Ah, okay. Tunnel one. Tunnel 2 Tunnel 3 Stick And a cherry on top 
We'll use some PVA glue to secure this rubble pile with a bit extra for a few more scattered rocks, grass tufts and a bit of sand for the hilltop. Moving on to these little chaps, rats to represent rats. God knows how many we've already lost in the fire. And the final piece, our dejected hero. I say hero, but there's nothing he can do. On to the priming stage. We'll give it a healthy black base coat. And then a grey highlight, followed by white. Making sure we get good coverage on the flames. The same treatment for Big Daddy. Once dry, we can crack on with the paints. We'll block in the metal colours. Two thin coats where required. A quick silver dry brush to reiterate its metallitude. Metallitude before moving on to the dual monitors. Now then, I think we all know what we have on our second monitor. What? <laughs> Check out my Patreon. We've got sneak peeks, voting, behind the scenes and more. Although, you'd better be quick, it's filling up fast. We've got three legendary members already. Holy moly. <laughs> YouTube. YouTube is always on the second monitor. I dread to think what his search history looks like. Now for the central control panel. A bit of important data. And you. This is you. My lovely subscriber. Look at him in there. Right oh, Let's block the other colours in. We've got a big red ball. A blue jumpsuit. And pale skin. We'll call these power orbs. Plasma power orbs. Or gems. Or shiny balls. Whatever they are, they need to look shiny. Onwards to the pulsing plasma ring. Various shades of turquoise before a final intermittent dry brush of white. We need some hard coat on the balls. Super shiny now. Let's block in the colours on the weaponry. Then add the odd detail here and there. Now, we're going to try a muzzle burn effect. So, start out with silver, then a quick coat of Nuln Oil, before switching to Drakenhof Nightshade for a dabbing around the front of the barrel, then a purple wash in a ring a bit further up the barrel, overlapping slightly, before a sepia wash again a bit further up the barrel. And there we go. Speaking of flames, let's get these painted. A top up with arctic white, and then a bright yellow. Then a very light yellow in the hottest parts, before we start blending with a dull orange. and then a fire orange in the deep sections of the flame. We'll add some black over the charred zone. Don't think I forgot about you. 
We need some black on the smoky parts of the flame. And then a blast of grey from above. Before returning with black to darken the shadows. While we've got this demonic beast out, we'll spray the tree as well. And the ground. Nothing like a bit of rat diversity. Now we need to create a fire line. That involves relentlessly stippling orange until it's reasonably bright. We'll continue the fire line up and over the tree. Another stipple attack, with yellow this time. Darken those burnt leaves. On to dry brushing the rubble and hillside. Before an Agrax Earthshade wash. A dribble of PVA throughout the rats and up on the hill. We don't need a complete covering, just enough. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Shake off the excess. We'll stipple with a hard brush to soften the edges of the grass patches. That weapon is looking a bit too clean for a beast of chaos. Without chopping a finger off, let's rough it up. Buffalo Bill is back for his spring clean. Again, we'll block the main colours in and we'll aim to leave a bit of the orange glow on the back. Godspeed, Billy. Next up, our solemn soldier staring into the abyss. Our Stormcast representative. Obviously, our chap isn't an official Stormcast model. None of those looked hopeless enough. So we've got one of Gamak's Spartan cast models instead. With a different head. After a wash, we'll let that dry. And then... Matte acrylic varnish. Watered down a bit, it's going everywhere except the flames and the grass. And now for the secret ingredient to achieve that catastrophic Pompeii look. It's a dry paint pigment from Vallejo. We need a very heavy dusting all over the charred zone. Especially on this crispy wrap. It looks like a female. Maybe it had babies. Now that is a shame. If they didn't burn in the fire, they'll almost definitely starve to death. Dear, oh dear. Anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, check the Patreon, become an eggling. You know what you're doing. Love you. Bye. Bye.